welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So if you saw my last video where I showed you how to use a variety of web enabled software defined radio receivers, then you're gonna be interested in this video where I'm gonna show you how to set up your very own web enabled SDR. Now, one of the web enabled SDR applications that really caught my eye was OpenWebRx. Now the original author of OpenWebRx abandoned the project towards the end of last year, but luckily for us, it's been taken over and is now more feature rich than ever before. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can install OpenWebRx onto a Raspberry Pi. But before I do that, I want to briefly talk about its features. Now, if you already know what OpenWebRx can do, then please feel free to jump to the installation part of this video. So here we have the main user interface that is presented through your web browser. Quite clearly in the middle, we can see the waterfall area with it scrolling down in a rather cool matrix fashion. Across the top of the UI is our frequency selection. From here, we can also adjust the passband filter. You will also notice some green indicators across the top. These are bookmarks, which you can create and edit yourself. On the bottom left, we have some stats about how well or not your server is performing. And on the bottom right is our control panel where we can change modes of modulation, select predefined profiles, adjust the volume, and change the waterfall sensitivity. Let's briefly talk about the capabilities of OpenWebRx, some of which are actually quite surprising. So first off, we have all of the standard demodulators, AM, FM, SSB, CW. We even have BPSK31 and BPSK64 demodulators. Now OpenWebRx heavily uses HTML5 features like WebSockets, Web Audio API, which all work extremely well on Chrome, Chromium and Firefox. The server itself can support RTL SDR, HackRF, SDR Play, AirSpy, Lime SDR, and Pluto SDR devices. Plus you can connect more than one at the same time. Now this is great if you have an SDR dedicated for the HF bands, and then another SDR dedicated to VHF or UHF. Now OpenWebRx has inbuilt decoders for DMR, YSF, NXDN, DSTAR, POXAG, and APRS. So you don't need to have any other software installed and there's no need to mess around with virtual audio cables either. So OpenWebRx can also decode FTA, FT4, Whisper, JT65 and JT9. Again, without having any other software installed, it's all shown on screen. OpenWebRx can easily be installed on Debian, Ubuntu and Raspberry Pi. It also supports the installation via Docker. So now we've gone through the specifications, let's take a look at some real examples. So there I was tuned to the 20 meter band, 14.2 megahertz on upper sideband, and we could clearly hear a station calling CQ. Now the vertical lines that you see there are just local QRM to me, so it's unlikely you would see this on your installation. So we all know what receiving SSB is like. So let's take a look at decoding some digital transmissions. And the first one that we'll look at will be decoding FT8. Now personally, I don't use FT8, but OpenWebRx has a really cool feature. Let me show you. So as you can see here in the bottom left, all of the FT8 signals have been decoded and we're able to view them. But if we click on the map button on the top right, a map of the world is displayed. For each received message, the maiden head locator is received. So OpenWebRx then plots these locators onto a map. In my opinion, this is a really cool feature as over time you will receive more and more FT8 messages and more and more grid squares will be colored. Now, if I speed this up slightly, we can see that I've received FT8 stations from as far away as the east coast of USA, through Europe and right over to Japan and China. I think that shows the power of FT8 and how well it works. Now, the band definitely wasn't open to Japan for SSB voice communications, but FT8 signals to manage to hop over. 
Another interesting cool feature is if you change bands and start receiving and decoding FT8 again, you'll notice that each Maidenhead locator has a different color for each band. So let's go ahead and look at APRS, which is another digital mode. For us here in the UK, we'll find APRS on 144.800, which is the automatic packet reporting system. It's an amateur radio based system for transmitting digital coordinates and digital information. The frequency will vary depending on which country you're in, but OpenWebRx has an inbuilt decoder so that we can visually see the APRS packet transmissions decoded. What also is a really cool feature is that each of these APRS transmissions normally contain a latitude and longitude, which means we can plot them onto a map. So as before with FT8 plotting grid squares, the APRS feature also plots these onto a map like this. So as mentioned before, OpenWebRx can also decode digital voice modes such as DMR, NXDN, DSTAR and YSF, which is Yaesu System Fusion. So let's take a quick listen to what these sound like and how well they get decoded. We'll first start off with YSF. Well, and we're about 500 feet ASL, so unless it rains or something, um, I can get into about two or three repeaters from here, which is quite good really on the UHF. So, uh, yeah, it all works quite well. What also is a nice touch is that when listening to some of the digital voice modes like YSF and DMR, OpenWebRx performs an ID lookup, which then provides some information about the user talking. In this case, we can clearly see the call sign of the person currently talking. And uh, appreciate the contact. I do hope we get the uh, chance to work again. 7-3, all the best of family. Stay safe, stay well. Fox in London. So that was a brief snippet of how D-Star sounds when it's being decoded via OpenWebRx. Now you may have noticed that we do not get any user information when decoding with D-Star. Let's finally take a listen to DMR to see how that sounds. I've just got to work on what to do with this hotspot. Big Peter may have you on that. I'm, I'm thinking now of flowing another SD card for the simplex, and one is programmed up yesterday, MDMR gateway with all the talk groups on. So as with YSF decoding, we also get user information when decoding DMR. You will also notice that both of the time lots are shown on the screen too. Now at the time of recording this video, there didn't appear to be any voice traffic on the other time slot, so I'm unsure whether OpenWebRx will send each time slot's audio to separate speakers, a bit like how DSD Plus works. So the last thing that we're going to look at will be the control panel. Now if we look here, we have FM, AM, LSB, USB, CW. We also have DMR, DSTAR, NXDN, YSF. Underneath here we have DIG for digital. And this is where we can select between the different types of digital modes that we want to decode. Now another cool feature is that you can add bookmarks on the fly. So if we tune to a frequency, let's say 14.1505, and we want you to store that, We'll click the bookmark button, we'll give it a name. We can choose the modulation type, say USB, make sure the frequency is right and click OK. And then at any particular time while you're on this band, if you click that bookmark, it will go straight to that frequency and set the mode correctly for you. So let's take a look at how we can set up our very own OpenWebRx web enabled SDR receiver. So as mentioned earlier in this video, I'll show you how you can set this up on a Raspberry Pi. Now there are a few things that we will need before we start. So first off, we'll need to download the application image from www.openwebrx.de. Then we'll need a Raspberry Pi. Anything greater than a Pi 3B plus should be okay to use. You'll also need a micro SD card in which we'll burn the image onto. You'll also need an SDR receiver. And as you can see here, we have quite a few of the popular models already supported. Lastly, you'll need an antenna connected to your SDR receiver. It's always best to use a tuned antenna for the band in which you wish to receive on. Now in my case, I'll be using an SDR Play RSP2 Pro, which luckily has an antenna port A and B, this means that I can connect my NFED half-wave antenna, which I use for below 30 megahertz, to one port, and then my dual-band colinear for VHF and UHF 
to the other port. We can then switch between the antennas through the OpenWebRx interface without having to add other SDRs. Now, if you have more than one SDR, one for HF and then one for VHF and UHF, then you can connect both of these to the Raspberry Pi's USB ports. Don't forget to attach your antennas to the correct SDR receiver. So let's go ahead and download the image from openwebrx.de. Now once downloaded, we'll need to uncompress it, simply right mouse click and select extract here. We'll then need to install our micro SD card into our computer's card reader. The software which I'll use to burn the image onto the micro SD card is called Etcher, which is a very popular and free software tool for imaging cards. Now once it's finished installing the image, you'll want to remove the card from your computer and then reinsert it. Once you've reinserted it into your computer, you'll get some pop-ups about the card not being formatted, but whatever you do, do not format the card. However, you should see one drive available to read, which is the boot drive. In this drive, we'll need to create a blank file called SSH. So once you've created the file, you may now remove the SD card from your PC and insert it into your Pi. With your SDRs connected, you can now go ahead and power on the Pi. You must make sure that you have the Pi plugged into your local area network so that we can access it. Now, if you don't want to use a LAN cable, then you can create a Wi-Fi configuration file to drop into the boot folder, like we did the SSH file. More information on this can be found on the internet. We now need to find out what IP address the Raspberry Pi has been assigned. And there are a few ways to do this, but I simply log into my router and see which device is new. Make a note of the IP address as we may need it later. Now at this point, with it all booted, you should be able to open a web browser on a computer which is on the same network as the Pi. Type http colon forward slash forward slash openwebrx into the browser and hit enter. You should now see the openwebrx user interface appear. Now there are a couple of things that we need to configure in the configuration file, which we'll come on to shortly. But if you have an RTL, STR, SDR Play or an AirSpy device connected, it should load one of the profiles and show it working. If not, don't worry, we'll go through on how to edit the profiles now. So to access the Raspberry Pi's files, I'm gonna use an application called WinSCP. This is a free application that works similar to an FTP client. I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can download this. Once you have WinSCP installed and running, you will need to make a small change to its configuration. Now, if you already know how to edit files on your Raspberry Pi, then you don't need to worry about WinSCP unless you already use it. If you have a preferred method, you could obviously use Nano from the command line, but you will need to edit the configuration file to put in some of your personal details and also change the profiles to support your SDR receivers. So once you've set up WinSCP to connect to your Pi using the Pi's IP address or OpenWebRx as the host name, the default username and password is Pi for the username and Raspberry for the password. You will then need to navigate to the ETC folder and then onto the OpenWebRx folder. You will now need to copy the config underscore WebRx.py file to your computer simply by dragging it from the right pane to the left pane. Now, once you've copied it locally, you can now edit this file. You can use any text editor, but my personal favorites are either Sublime or Visual Studio Code. This makes it easier to read the code. The first section you'll need to edit will be the web GUI configuration. You'll need to set your receiver name. I used my ham radio call sign. You need to set the receiver location, the ASL, an admin email address, and the latitude and longitude of the receiver's location. Now this is only really important if you plan to expose this server onto the internet for others to use. You want a way to provide the information to the user so they have some details about where it's located and maybe what kind of antennas you're using. If you're just using this for yourself, then this information is less critical. Now as we scroll down the configuration file, we'll come across the profiles. You can see how each profile is carefully laid out. Please make sure that you do this part correctly. Otherwise, when the server starts, it may not be able to process the configuration file. It's probably worthwhile to take a copy of this file as a backup before we start editing it. So each profile within SDRs can be configured to work with a specific SDR type. So make sure you're using the correct type in your profiles and discard the rest. Because the SDR receiver may not cover the whole of one particular band, 
you may have to create several profiles that say cover two megahertz bandwidth chunks. It's also worth pointing out that you may need to make sure that you have a supported sample rate selected in each profile. Now, if you enter a sample rate which cannot be supported by the SDR receiver, then it will either not work or you may experience stutter on the received audio. If this happens, then you'll need to lower the sample rate. So once you've configured your profiles, save the file and then copy it back to the Pi. You'll now need to reboot the Pi so that the new configuration file is ready and set up. So go ahead, reboot your Pi and everything should be working great. Now it may seem a little complicated to set up, but in reality it's actually quite easy. Now if you attempt this yourself and you get stuck, then please leave a message in the comments section below and I'll try to assist you. Well I hope you enjoyed this rather long winded video and if you did, please subscribe if you haven't already as I have lots of content that you might find useful. Until the next video, thanks for watching, stay safe, take care and I'll see you in the next video.